Good afternoon, everyone. It is Tuesday, June 2nd, and welcome to our first virtual lunch and learn. I think we thought uh, when we set these up by the quarter, we'd at least have this one in person, but it doesn't look like we've been able to do that. So we thank you all for joining us today uh, for our uh, Prepare for Relaunch, uh, Branding and Digital Advertising. A little bit of what we were planning for today, uh, but a little but a little different spin. Uh, we have with us Jay Winkler and Dave Castorino from um, Idea Lab Digital Marketing or Idea Lab Digital, is that what it's called now? Idea, uh, Lab, Idea Lab Digital. Digital, Digital. Digital. awesome, great. So um, without further ado, I'm gonna turn the panel uh, over to our experts for our presentation. As I noted, if you have questions, please use the chat box. I will be monitor monitoring that. And you can also raise your hand and we'll meet you at the end of the presentation for conversation. So Jay, Dave, the floor is yours. All right, great. Christy, thanks for the introduction and thanks for allowing us to do this. Uh, as Christy said, my name is Jay Winkler. I'm with Idea Lab Digital and I'm joined here by Dave Castorino, who is our digital account manager. Uh, I'm going to be doing the bulk of the presentation and then uh, Dave's going to chime in with, uh, with much more interesting facts as we go. <laughs> um, and so I'm going to share my screen here. Uh, first of all, also at the end, we're, we're going to try to do this in about 30 to 40 minutes uh, and then open it up for a Q&A at the end. Uh, it looks like we have about 10 folks, so that's a little more <clears throat> than, uh, than I'd want for just an open Q&A as we go. So we'll do the questions at the end and we'll burn through the presentation pretty quick. We are going to cover a lot, so, uh, you know, and we can't give you all the gory details. We'll just give you as as much knowledge as we can. And, uh, and then we can have follow ups after that if people have more specific questions for Dave and I. Uh, Dave, you want to say any words before uh, we get going here? No, sounds good. Um, happy to be here. Christy, thank you for giving us the opportunity to present and uh, looking forward to the discussion. Okay. Uh, First, before we get going, I just want to make sure, Christy, you're seeing, and Dave, you're seeing my screen uh, yes, I am. correctly? Yes, Yep. Yep. Okay, okay great. Uh, so, yeah, we're, we're excited to present today, and we're also very excited about the, uh, the recent uh, NASA SpaceX mission. So we kind of built our whole theme around, uh, you know, relaunching, and uh, more specifically, in the wake of COVID-19, uh, we want to give small businesses in the area as much free knowledge um, as we can share today uh, to, to give you some tips on how you can kind of brand and uh, digitally market your businesses. Um, so uh, we will prepare for relaunch. Uh, here's what we're going to cover today. Uh, we wouldn't be good marketers if uh, we didn't tell you a little bit about ourselves. So the first few slides uh, or five or six slides are going to be about our agency and who we are. And again, we can make this presentation available after the fact and Christie's recording. So uh, there'll be the recorded version as well. Uh, but here are all the topics we're going to cover today. Okay. Um, first, a little bit about the agency. Uh, Idea Lab was founded in 1996 by my former business partner, Jack Palin. Uh, he was a, uh, you know, kind of an institution uh, with his former agency, Palin and Sweeney, for any of those, uh, any of you that have um, been around South Jersey for a while in the business community, you may have heard of the former agency. So Idea Lab was first formed and uh, based in Marlton before moving to, uh, to Moorestown uh, in the early 2000s. Uh, and then I had a firm uh, called Evolution Design Firm that was focused mostly on branding and design work. And uh, uh, Idea Lab acquired that firm and we merged with another agency called Ritchie Associates. And I joined uh, Jack and Patricia Ritchie as partner in 2003. Uh, we quickly grew the agency. Uh, and in fact, we, we made the uh, 50 fastest growing companies uh, list by NJ Biz in 2006. So that was an exciting milestone. I think bringing together three partners and three agencies, uh, we had a lot of clients and a lot of exciting work. But of course, the uh, the Great Recession happened and uh, things changed drastically. So we had to relaunch ourselves 
Uh, it took a while. Uh, in 2013, I acquired the firm and we renamed it Idea Lab Digital uh, with our focus on being a digital agency. And, and uh, at that time, we developed a 10 year strategic plan and what we call the creative cure. And I'll go over that in a bit. Um, jumping ahead to where we are now in 2020, uh, we have a fantastic creative team with, uh, there are seven of us on board, uh, five that are full-time and two part-timers. And, uh, you know, we're truly a full service branding agency, branding and digital agency at this time, offering everything from uh, creative, uh, digital brand video and web development. Um, as is outlined here. And again, you can find this information on our website, but these are our core capabilities and services, branding, digital, motion video, uh, traditional print communications, and web design and development. Uh, you know, at any given time, we have about 10 core clients, and then we have about 20 others that are project-based clients. Uh, again, you know, we've been in business for almost 25 years. Uh, but the past uh, seven years have been the most exciting um, where we've really kind of pushed into the digital space. And uh, that's pretty much the only space to be in these days, in our opinion. So our creative team. Uh, again, I'm Jay Winkler. I serve as the cre uh, chief creative officer, uh, but I wear a lot of hats for our, our small agency. Um, Jessica Baskin is our art director. Brian Ciccarelli is our web designer and developer. Uh, Dave, who's going to co-present today, is our digital account manager. And then Annie Sensendiver uh, is our graphic designer and content producer. Uh, so I uh, don't know where the folks are that are on the call, but uh, we're located on Main Street in Morristown. Uh, just you know, a hop, skip, and a jump from uh, the chamber offices on Fellowship Road there. In Mount Laurel. Okay, uh, the creative cure. Uh, this is our own brand promise that we came up with. And basically, the creative cure stands for uh, custom creative solutions. Everything we do, we do in house. We don't outsource any creative that we do. Uh, we make it a point to understand the marketplace. And, and when I say marketplace, uh, we we make it a point to understand our clients' marketplace and industry and their verticals and the audiences they serve. And that allows us to reach their audiences effectively. And probably the most important piece that Dave can touch on a little bit later is evaluation and enhancement. So using uh, data and analytics to and statistics to evaluate our campaigns and their effectiveness is, has become extremely important. Okay, uh, so, so this, is, this is where we're gonna share as much knowledge as possible and offer as many DIY uh, do-it-yourself tactics as we can. Uh, again, we're gonna cover a lot and, and in the end, uh, please take notes and in the end you can ask questions about this. Um, you know, so the first question as advertised in, in Christy's emails, you know, have you adapted your branding and your marketing strategy to the digital space? And when I say that, I'm really talking about now and within the past few months with all that's happened. Um, so here's tip number one. Uh, brand consistency is key. You know, a, a tool that we use as an agency and most ad agencies and design firms use are something called mood boards. Uh, the example you see on the screen was one we, we threw together. It was actually one of about 10 different mood boards that we put together for our client breaking data. Um, you know, putting together a mood board, and you can definitely do this yourself, uh, allows you to kind of create a, a color scheme, uh, the fonts, the typography, uh, making sure your logo is the way you want it to look. Uh, in this case, you see a bunch of stock photography and, and illustrations and such. Um, you know, creating these mood boards allows you to create visual assets that you can share across social platforms and in your digital ad campaigns. Uh, and again, this is something you can do yourself. We're, all, we're recommending these three free uh, software applications here, Adobe Spark, Canva, 
and mood board. Uh, mood board is actually at gomoodboard.com. All of these are drag and drop and it's real simple. You're just kind of throwing together a collection of imagery and fonts and whatever you want to kind of develop your style for your brand. Uh, again, there's a lot more that goes behind this when we're, we're doing branding. Uh, this is really more a do-it-yourself thing that kind of can keep you on track visually. Uh, tip number two, and again, we're going to jump around and cover a lot here. Um, first thing is all websites need to be mobile friendly or mobile optimized. You might have heard the terminology responsive, uh, responsive code. If your site is not coded responsively, <laughs> Uh, then you need to consider upgrading your site uh, because uh, most searches begin on a smartphone or a mobile device. And if your phone's not, or your, uh, your I'm sorry, your site is not performing correctly, um, you know, for that person in that search, they're going to give up and move on. So uh, listed here is a, a super easy tool that you can use yourself. Um, Sorry, just reading Christy's chat here. Um, you, you can you can put your web address in in this tool, and it'll actually rate your website and tell you how mobile friendly it is. Uh, so I highly recommend that. And then I guess the challenge is where do you go from there? If if you get a low rating, uh, you know you need to if you can't build a website yourself, you need to talk to a designer or or an agency like ours. Um, but it's a worthwhile test. Okay. Uh, we talked about analytics in our overview of what we do at the agency. Tip number three, if you do not have Google Analytics installed on your website already, uh, we highly recommend that. It, it is something that you can do yourself. Uh, there's a URL here. Um, again, this presentation will be shared and this is recorded. Uh, and you can learn how to set this up yourself, especially if you have a site like a WordPress site or with an editor where you can drop the, the Google Analytics code into the site. And then you can be, begin um, tracking your audiences and, and when people are visiting your site, where they're coming from, and you can gain a ton of knowledge. And I'm going to allow Dave to chime in on that because he's uh, an expert in this area. Yeah, I, I just wanted to add that if your site is on WordPress, they do offer a plugin to be able to easily integrate Google Analytics if you don't have it. Um, and we find that it's really important that when we're running all these campaigns and they're coming in from different sources like email, Google AdWords, Facebook, it's important to track that traffic so we can understand what's successful and where people are going to on the website. Um, and if they're taking uh, an action that we like to call a key performance indicator. So are those people from Facebook coming in and are they submitting the form? Are they making a purchase? Um, so all those kind of variables go into to play here and we're tracking all that data using Google Analytics. Thanks, Dave. All right, uh, tip number four is keep your website fresh update it on a regular basis. Uh, there's a number of ways you can do this. Um, you know, one is if, if you have a newsletter already, or maybe it's something that you're not able to keep up with, I recommend that you revive it and uh, publish it online. Uh, the example in front of you is our, our news page where we, we share our monthly newsletter. Uh, I also recommend if you do have a, a, an electronic newsletter, that you have a subscribe form on that page, uh, and then you encourage people to, to go there and sign up through, uh, through social media and such. Um, another thing, if you don't have a newsletter, but you have a news section or an events page or a blog on your site, you know, just add content, uh, share stories about your business, what you're doing on, if not a daily basis, weekly basis, or a monthly basis. Uh, jumping back up to the first bullet point here under the tips, one thing that we often find when we're upgrading sites is that uh, 
businesses and brands don't clearly describe their services in a concise manner that really reflect who they are and what they do. Uh, so, you know, kind of perform an, an audit, if you will, of your site and, and go through your pages and, and determine if, if you're really saying the message that you want to say now. So for instance, uh, you know, if, if you're just getting ready to reopen your business or you've, or you're open and you're struggling, uh, you know, just by adding, uh, a notice that says how you're dealing with, uh, your business, what your hours are, simple things like that can go a long way. Dave, you want to add anything there? Um, no, I think you pretty much covered it, Jay. Okay, great. All right, tip number five, and, and, and this really should be tip number one almost. Uh, video content is, is king right now. Uh, you know, YouTube is owned by Google. Uh, I'm sure we're all watching Facebook Live uh, and Instagram stories and, and everything else. Um, you know, the more, the more video content you push out, uh, a, a lot of things are going to happen. One, you're going to get more impressions and more eyeballs and traffic to, to your site, and your brand. Um, but secondly, again, Google loves itself and it loves YouTube. So the more video content you publish, the more searchable your site's going to become. Uh, but let's talk about the video content. Uh, you know, I think in today's, um, and when I say today's realm, I really mean kind of what's changed the past few months. Uh, you know, don't be scared to capture a quick engaging video of yourself, you know, kind of explaining who you are, what you do and your brand, if you're not doing that already and what products you sell and how people can get them. Um, and just put it out there. You know, I, I, I don't necessarily like how I sound on video or look necessarily, uh, but you know, I'm comfortable with it now, especially after the past few months, you know, we've been, we've been doing zoom calls like everyone else and meetings and giving presentations and, you know, just record it, share it. Don't overthink it. Uh, now with that said, here are seven secrets or tips. Um, the first is the important one. Uh, focus on stories, not sales. You know, as soon as uh, someone watches a sales video, uh, they're going to be turned off unless unless they're genuinely searching for that content. Uh, so focus on sharing stories about your clients, your customers, and your business, and yourselves, and, and what you're doing. Uh, two, use the first few seconds wisely. Uh, you know, you, you only have about five to seven seconds to capture someone's attention, so make it memorable. Uh, in the beginning. Uh, target relevant audiences. Dave's going to kind of touch upon that a little bit later, but let's say you upload a video to YouTube. You do have the ability to, um, you know, promote that and then also add keywords so that that content is searchable uh, when you upload content. Uh, four, tell your story without sounds or audio. Uh, a lot of times people are checking out things uh, late at night and they don't want to like wake up their, their spouse or their partner or whatever. So, you know, make sure that your, your video has content that's not relying on people uh, listening to your words. Uh, and there are lots of great video editors out there that allow you to add on-screen text. Uh, Five, if you are promoting something, include calls to action. So what are you trying to drive someone to do? Are you trying to drive them to call you, visit your site, uh, you know, buy your product? Uh, just be clear about that. Uh, optimize the video for search. That's more or less what I was saying uh, earlier about, about adding keywords when you upload your video, which again, you can do on YouTube. Uh, and then seven, I think this has become a big one uh, in our, you know, kind of the millennial generation. You know, they love uh, the collab, the collaboration uh, where brands partner with each other to promote or co-launch something. Uh, th this can be done on any level, whether it's B2B or for B2C. Uh, you know, just because you might be in a boring industry doesn't mean you can't uh, do a collab with uh, another brand or company. Uh, there's power in numbers. So the more eyeballs you get uh, on your video, the better. Um, this, you know, this is an example of just this 
you know, goofy video we did, which I'm not going to show you that right now because I want to keep going and I want to save plenty of time for questions. Uh, so, Dave, anything I forgot on um, on the adapt your brand section? No, I think just retouching on your point about video. Um, now these past few months more than ever, I feel like it's it holds much more weight and importance. Um, and like you said, don't overthink it. Just post it, share it, uh, whether it's a market update as it relates to your industry, um, an interview with somebody in your business or industry uh, to describe a market trend or an update, you know, whatever it is. Uh, I think now more than ever, it's really important to get that word out there because you know, we're not meeting in person. There's no more sit downs. Um, it's, it's a little bit different way of doing things. So I think now more than ever, it holds a lot of weight uh, for video services. Great, thank you. Okay, uh, so the next topic we're gonna cover, and, and again, this is, this is a, a big topic. And so we're just gonna skim through at a high level. Uh, so we asked the question, or we're asking you the question, do you have products or services that can be sold online, but you're not equipped with e-commerce? Uh, there are a number of solutions. So again, we're just gonna scratch the surface here. Uh, it looks like we have about 10 attendees on, on the Zoom call here. So if I had to guess, uh, the majority or most of, of those attendees have a website and it's probably a WordPress based site. Uh, could be wrong, but that's my guess. Um, WooCommerce is the most popular plugin or, you know, module for, for that integrates with WordPress. Uh, you can do it yourself, uh, but you'd need to have experience with uh, some basic design and content and maybe some light uh, code editing and such. Uh, but that's probably our number one recommendation for, for adding an e-commerce solution. If you already have a WordPress site that you like, uh, you can add it. Uh, across the bottom here, you know, these are the probably some of the top, top uh, e-commerce solutions. Shopify is one. Uh, again, I feel like Shopify is similar to WooCommerce where you're going to need probably a designer and a developer involved. Uh, Squarespace is a bit more of a do-it-yourself solution. Uh, Volusion definitely is, uh, but you, you would probably need some graphic design knowledge and, and such. Uh, and then, of course, Wix that we're all familiar with. They advertise heavily. Uh, so those are all uh, solutions where you could do it yourself, but probably going to need a developer to, to add or integrate um, those e-commerce solutions. Now, if you're looking for a quick to market, uh, I have a product, I want to sell it, um, then here's a really easy solution. Uh, if you have a Facebook business page already, uh, if you go to the left column of your, if you navigate to your business page and you go to the left column in Facebook, you'll see there's an option that says shop. Uh, if you click on that, it'll actually take you through this super simple setup and you can add a Facebook shop and be selling products within minutes. Uh, I did it, uh, this test here in about 10 minutes. All I needed was my name, company name, my state tax ID number, not to be confused with your federal ID number, tax ID number. Uh, you need your business checking account routing number, checking number, and, and then you need photos of your products and descriptions of your products. And again, I, th I think I did it in about 10 minutes. And uh, again, I had, I had uh, my product photo ready to go. Um, but this is a, a real simple solution. And then once you have your products in your shop, uh, you can easily hit the share button and share it across your, your, your Facebook business page and your timeline uh, to all your followers. And then of course you could boost that post and, and you could be selling uh, probably within a few hours, uh, which is amazing. Um, now for the business folks that are more LinkedIn users, uh, you know, I don't think there's anything like that on LinkedIn. Is there Dave? No, there there's not on LinkedIn. Yeah. Yeah, so 
for the more B2B folks that might not be on Facebook, this might not be a solution. Uh, but again, we wanted to share this because uh, some people might not be aware. Now, if you already have e-commerce and you have an online shop, uh, Facebook also offers integrations uh, that we've helped other clients with where you can basically uh, uh, transpose that content into the Facebook shop and, and market your products through Facebook. So, uh, you know, not everyone's a Facebook lover, but, uh, you know, it's definitely, uh, this, this is definitely a useful tool. Okay, so let's say you have an online store, uh, Facebook shop, whatever it might be, um, or, or products uh, that you want to sell manual, however you want to do it. You know, um, there's people that they put all the time and the effort and they say, and then they do a little bit of SEO and they say, oh, no one's buying my product. So, you know, the adage or the, you know, the famous movie line, if you build it, he will come or they will come is, is wrong when it comes to, you know, digital presence. Uh, you know, setting up the store is just the first part. You know, you have to promote it through through search tactics and digital advertising to drive traffic and drive sales. Uh, and then just shown here, you know, again, uh, I'm not sure of different people's levels, uh, but uh, Google ads, there's a ton of options for every type of business. Okay, lead generation. And, uh, and this is where I'm gonna turn the presentation over to Dave for this section. Uh, I'll just lead it off here. So let's say you have that strong web presence, but you're not getting the leads and the site traffic you want. Uh, here's a bunch of tips and solutions to help you do that. And Dave, you can take it away here. Great. Um, so step one, we kind of talk about organic lead generation. And these are things that you can do that are totally free um, and they're gonna boost your on-site SEO right off the bat. Um, so if we go down to our tips there, you'll see the first recommendation is SEO, add page titles, descriptions, and keywords to all your web pages. So all of your web pages basically have a language um, and Google's picking up and interpreting each of those pages how they see it. So it's important that for each page on your site, you go through and you tag it with keywords that uh, relate to that page or descriptions and also titles so that Google can better index your website. Um, step two is create a Google My Business listing. If you don't have one already, it's really easy to do. Um, and that's really gonna boost your local SEO. So if people are searching for your products and services within, I think it's a 10 mile radius now, uh, your site or your business listing will be eligible to come up. Uh, and you wanna make sure all that information is accurate with your latest logo, photos, your business hours, um, proper contact information, uh, your website links are updated there. Because oftentimes we find um, a lot of business owners we work with, they don't remember how they set it up or how to access it and, and things change, uh, things get updated. And when that information on your business listing is out of date, that's gonna negatively affect your search ranking. Um, step three, we have prepare a social media calendar. And I guess not just social media, uh, it's kind of, we think of it as a content calendar as a whole. Um, we kind of urge our clients each month to go through and evaluate kind of what's on their to-do list and, and what things are they going to be putting out on social media? Or are they going to be posting on their website? Um, are there events coming up, uh, different news and articles that kind of help them keep on track with uh, the timeline ahead of them? And then last, you know, post everything and share on every social account that you can manage or feel like being a part of. Uh, the tier ones are, you know, your Facebook, your Instagram, uh, tier two kind of Twitter, um, LinkedIn, Pinterest, and Google Plus. Uh, so just make sure you're getting the word out there. Um, whatever you're posting is kind of consistent and succinct across all platforms. Next, we'll move into paid search. So again, I kind of touched on this, but Google ads is kind of your tier one 
ad communication platform. Um, Google's doing a great job at making their ads look more like organic content. And, you know, just a little overview here for anyone not familiar with Google ads, you know, we're literally bidding on keywords and phrases that are related to our clients' products and services. Uh, so the example here is for a community college sports program. And, you know, we're, we're bidding on this keyword set here in the search bar above, and our ad is displaying right here above all of the organic content. So a couple of key recommendations there is, you know, your ad text should contain keywords that are related to the user search. So here we have community college. Um, you can see that in the ad copy or the ad text right above um, and some of the other keywords that uh, relate in the description there. Um, another main point is you wanna provide a call to action in your ad text. So like here we have join the Mighty Oaks at SCC. So, you know, whatever you're putting out there, you got to think about whatever you want people to do or, you know, whether it's request a free quote, uh, get a consultation. So it's definitely important to incorporate that into some of your ad copy. Um, and then create multiple ad variations for testing. So for any one campaign, uh, we probably have about 20 to 30 different advertisements running. And then what we can do is, you know, after about 30 days or so, we can evaluate those ads and see which ones performed, which ones didn't, uh, which, which ones displayed uh, for which keyword sets that we're bidding on. And then we kind of use that information to kind of tweak and optimize the campaigns moving forward. Next, we have paid social. So, Another tier one platform, as I like to think of it, is Facebook and Instagram. Uh, Facebook owns Instagram, so anything that you're running through their ad management platform is going to display, or you can select it if you so choose to display through Instagram timelines as well. Um, so it allows us to target users by their location, uh, specific demographics and interests uh, with these sponsored ads placed directly within their timeline. So an example on the right hand side is some homes that we're promoting for the Moriuchi group. Um, and we are targeting users uh, in a radius of Morristown and, you know, by specific demographics um, and other breakdowns for their interests. We know that people um, have looked on Zillow or realtor.com and they're interested in buying a home. So in turn, we are serving them advertisements for these listings. A couple recommendations for Facebook ads. Your text should be, your text should be limited to 20% of the image itself. So what does that mean? Facebook basically hates ads that have tons of copy over top of your image. So they're gonna limit your exposure there. So they really want your message and everything that you're getting across to kind of sit up here in the, in the text field above the image. Um, Step two, your message should be clear and concise. So, you know, at the end of the day, you're running this campaign, but what do you want these people to do? We want them in this case to schedule a home tour. So any sort of call to action that you can think about should definitely be included uh, in your ad. And then lastly, it should link to a specific landing page. So in this example, all these different homes in this ad here, it's gonna link to the specific page for that home. Um, we don't want to drive users to a page that doesn't really relate to the message on the ad or pertain to why they click through in the first place, because otherwise we find they're just going to leave. Jay, you got anything to add to that one? Uh, no, that was great. And I'm, I'm just being aware of the time here because I want to leave plenty of time for uh, open discussion. Uh, so uh, we're almost through here and uh, the next and final thing I believe uh, for lead generation is considering an email marketing campaign uh, if you don't have one already. Uh, I have a few examples of our, our campaign here. Uh, the way we do it is Dave mentioned a calendar. So we have a calendar uh, and we do a newsletter uh, via email once a month. Uh, and it's really not only an email newsletter, it's it's really just a newsletter in general by today's digital standards. So we we release that via via email software. 
uh, across social platforms, pretty much all of our social pages. Uh, and then sometimes we'll break it up into the individual stories that we share in the newsletter. We make it light, we make it friendly, we make it fun. Uh, our recommendations to make it successful are personalization. So you'll see in the example on the left here, it's personalized. Uh, the one on the right, it's, it's not. Uh, and you can just have fun with your, your messaging. Um, you know, you want to try to capture someone's attention. Again, share stories. Don't focus on sales uh, when it comes to this type of advertising. Uh, being magnanimous is appreciated by your audience uh, and your prospects. Uh, again, recurring themes here include a call to action. Uh, so, you know, what, what are you trying to achieve? You're trying to get a click through, you're trying to get someone to watch a video, you're trying to get someone to buy a product, make sure, um, within the body of the email, you have those calls to action, uh, and set goals for that newsletter. So when you develop your, your calendar for your social and your marketing content, um, you know, what, what are your goals? Again, is it to, to promote your services, your brand or sell products directly? And then, and then this is an important one uh, from a brand perspective is be consistent uh, visually uh, and with the tone and the messaging. Uh, so develop a style and stick with it. And if it's not working, be willing to uh, change it. Okay, so uh, here's a recap of everything before we open it up for discussion. Uh, you know, again, first adapt your brand to the digital marketplace, uh, consistency, uh, throughout your branding, make sure your website's mobile friendly, track your website, uh, traffic with Google analytics, update your site frequently and add video content is, is huge. Now, secondly, if you can, uh, add e-commerce to the equation. Uh, there's again, there's a lot to consider there, but, uh, it can be done. And then lastly, you need to drive sales, you need to drive impressions. Uh, through lead generation tactics. And, uh, you know, again, we kind of covered organic, which is the free uh, side of things, and then the paid strategies. Um, you know, lastly, you know, just, just aim high, shoot for the stars. Uh, there's, there's, you have to be constantly watching technology and what's changing in the digital marketplace. So just be, be flexible and be willing to move with it and adjust and learn new things. Step outside of your comfort zone. Um, you know, your, your customers, they, they don't know about you if you're not promoting yourselves. So don't be afraid, uh, put the message out there. Uh, and again, you know, use, use these tactics as best you can to, to uh, get the word out. So with that, we will say thank you. And, uh, we will open it up for questions and discussion and, Christy, there you are. So hopefully you can yep. do that for us. Yep. I am back. Uh, if you have I'll any stop questions. The Either uh, raise your hand or throw it into the chat room. I guess I have a question. I'll start us off. The Facebook business shop, is that, um, you know, is that just strictly for a product or does it work for events and other things of that nature? Or do you actually have to have a, a real viable product? Uh, I think it can work for anything. I guess it gets a little bit tr tricky with a service uh, because you have oh. to establish how you're going to, how you're going to set that up from a billing perspective. I only okay. did the test set up with a product. Okay. Yeah. If you have a, a specific event, Christy, that you want to mm -hmm. promote, um, you can create the event page for it and right. then you can actually promote that through right. Facebook's ad tools. Okay. Yeah. We do that already. Um, oh, we got, we have a question. All right. Um, how do you leverage the data you receive um, from all the Google Analytics? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so we usually want to give our campaigns about three weeks to 30 days uh, once we have them running so that we kind of have, you know, a, a three or four weeks under our belt to look at the past data and see what's working. Um, a lot of times if we see there's being a lot of traffic driven to a website to certain pages, but there's a quick drop off of traffic mm -hmm. and they're not staying long or they're leaving right away. We kind of want to evaluate and look at what that web page is saying and the messaging and content that's on there. And, you know, are these people going there and they're not finding what they're looking for um, and 
trying to think about and adjust it from that standpoint. Um, and then we also, on the flip side, we like to look at and reevaluate our campaigns to see if, you know, maybe we're targeting the wrong key keywords or we're hitting the wrong audience or the message needs to tweak and change. Uh, so there's a lot of different factors that come into play. And we like to look at all that uh, with the help from Google Analytics. Thanks for your okay. question. Yeah, thank you. Do we have other questions? We have um, about 17 minutes left and you've got two marketing experts here, so don't hold back. Now's not any, the time to be shy. Any struggles that anyone's facing or new challenges, yeah. uh, you know, in the past couple of months, um, be happy to hear and offer advice or well, I thought one of the really important things that Jay said was, you know, tell your story. And um, this is probably the um, 537th million webinar that we've had since we've been shut down, where we've, where in some way, shape or form, we've talked about, you know, stop selling and start telling, tell your story. Um, you know, people are buying, but they're buying softly right now. They're not uh, buying on, on hard sales and, and hard sales are making people's head spin, you know, um, and I'll tell the story I had, you know, an, an advertising person call me and see if I wanted to advertise. I'm like, I just furloughed my entire staff. What do you mean? Do I want to advertise, you know, um, which is hard. We don't know where someone else has been in and, but telling stories, you know, telling testimonials, um, you know, sharing good stories is, is important. Um, you know, I know we, um, we've got a couple people on here and, um, you know, things maybe didn't go so well for them uh, recently uh, with a big holiday. And how do you combat negative publicity? Uh, wow, that's a tough one. So one thing I'll say up front is, you know, we are not a, a public relations firm in the traditional sense. Uh, so handling that is, and, and we used to offer that service, uh, you know, but for, you know, Crisis communications is, is kind of needed for that uh, on just a basic small business level. Um, Jay, I guess you know, maybe, to help, maybe to help you well, out, let me kind of, I, I can yeah. chime in, maybe just combating it on, you know, you, you write one thing, one person writes one thing on Facebook and it goes completely viral and then all of a sudden there's 15,000 people and the last thing you know is, you know, someone who was at your company 20 years ago is now chiming in that says 20 years ago we had a bad... Yeah, we had bad okay, service so, there. Maybe kind of right, narrow so it down there. Okay. Yeah, that's more like reputation management. Uh, yeah. So, which is again a kind of a subset specialty. But you know, really the, and we have we have to deal with this a lot. Uh, you have to roll with the punches a bit. But the best thing to do is to let's say it's a bad product review. You know, the best response to that is so people see the response is respond to that bad review and say, hey, so-and-so, sorry you had a bad experience. Here's what we're doing to fix that problem. Here, here are the product enhancements or the service enhancements we're making and just deal with it upfront and deal with it publicly uh, if you can. Uh, and then as far as reviews go, encourage as many uh, customers and clients, to, especially the good ones, to leave positive reviews to push down the negative ones. Uh, and then I see, um, we got some we questions. I'm just going to ask everybody though, too. Sure. Can you please use the chat box and not the Q and A? The Q and A is actually used for di something different, and I've got to monitor both of them. So let me go. I think, um, you know, the first one. Let's talk to Amanda. Cold calls are most challenging right now. Should I use an advertisement as follow up? Uh, I would say yes. Uh, and when when we say advertisement, I would say keep it simple as an email follow up uh, first and foremost. Uh, there are more specific tactic or more strategic tactics that you can use uh, with remarketing. So, for instance, if, you, if you're running Facebook ads, uh, the ads manager does, uh, allows you to upload a spreadsheet with your contact list to ensure that your audience and the folks you're cold calling are seeing your ad across social platforms. Um, Dave, you have anything to add to that? Because I know you've dealt with that a lot. Yeah, if we we love getting those customer lists for people that they're either sending sending direct mail pieces to um, that they're regularly in contact with. Maybe it's a prospect list. We like to upload those lists to Facebook to make sure that 
you know, whatever sort of messaging that they're hitting those people with that, you know, we're also converting that to a digital format and serving them that same advertisement that they might be hearing or getting in the mail on their Facebook or Instagram timelines. Um, so it's, you know, a great way to add some consistency and frequency in your messaging. And whenever we can get a customer list, we we'd love to incorporate that into the campaigns. Awesome. Great. We've got a couple other questions. Um, Lauren, Lauren says, our WordPress has a Yoast plugin. Do you feel that accurately evaluates SEO? Uh, so we'll tag team this, Dave. I'll start and you can add technical details. Um, so, I, you know, as far as evaluating SEO, I, I'm not sure. Dave might have an answer to that, but it does allow you to, to accurately enter SEO content. Uh, uh, such as your page titles, uh, the keywords. And, you know, as uh, you might be familiar, there's the free version and then there's Yoast SEO Premium, which has more functionality and features. The jury's out on how much value the premium adds. Uh, it definitely can help. Uh, Dave, you want to add to that? Yeah, I was going to say it's, it's a great way to add those descriptions and, and keywords and page titles to your pages. Um, as far as evaluating, you might use something like Google Search Console, um, which it's easy to register for that. It's similar to Google My Business, where um, it'll show you the actual keywords that, that your site is ranking for and what queries are causing your website to display on Google Search. So we like to look at that data too. Um, and we also used another platform called SEM Rush. Uh, which lets us kind of evaluate popular search terms within your industry. And then we kind of take those keyword lists, combine them and scrub them and see what the common themes are and then how we can incorporate that into your website using a Yoast plugin. Thanks, right, Dave. thanks. Hope that our answers next, your question. Our next question is thoughts on surveys and sweepstakes as a way for more cost-effective lead generation versus traditional display ads. I'll start, Dave, and you can you can finish because I'm excited about this one. Um, yeah, we we love uh, sweepstakes uh, as a way to you know people love uh, freebies and they love to enter a contest. So by all means, uh, if you can uh, you know run an online sweepstakes across social platforms, Facebook, Instagram, wherever you want, uh, you you are definitely going to get impressions, eyeballs, and clicks, uh, and you're also going to gain. Uh, the leads through the sign-up form. So that that's really the way we do it. Uh, you know, we basically have it gated. So you have to, uh, you know, submit your name and at least your email uh, with the understanding that you're you're going to be entered into the sweepstakes and be subscribing to a newsletter, perhaps. Uh, Dave, uh, I'm sure you have thoughts. On yeah, that. I'm I'm a huge giveaway sweepstakes guy. I think people love free stuff. Um, we recently ran a campaign for an unnamed client to give away sporting event tickets. And in a one month period, we gained over 1000 customer email addresses of local people who were, you know, those prospects, those became prospects and, and very important value to our client. Um, and you can do that effectively just marketing that giveaway through Facebook and Instagram, uh, your website and other platforms, and then driving them to, a landing page that describes the giveaway and you know has fields for them to punch in their information to be entered for the contest. So I love giveaways. I think it's a great way and and a and a swift way to to gain prospects and and customer information. But you of course have to give something away at the end of it. And then uh, just one more comment. Alex also asked uh, thoughts on surveys. Uh, you know, not as exciting as sweepstakes, but if the survey content is timely. Uh, absolutely. I, I think that's a great way to uh, promote your promote your brand and, uh, you know, gain, gain followers. Any other questions? Any other questions? Well, seeing none. Uh, thank you, Jay and Dave for your time today. As I put in the chat box earlier today, if you um have something that was touched on today and you'd like a deeper dive on, let us know. Um, we probably think we have about six more weeks of online um, 
online programming uh, to plan for all of you. And um, you know, we're gonna keep them coming. And even when we start to come back slowly, we'll probably still continue online programming. And most of the programming we have at the Chamber, you can um, access online through our Zoom room as well. So um, uh, Jay, Dave, thanks so much for joining us today. Um, with that, being so much, the recording.